<laughs> hey everybody today we're hanging with Colbert stick around tick 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 boom hey guys thanks for joining me you know being in a swamp you're around lots of water and where there's lots of water there's these guys right here the river birch I was asking Colbert if he could show us a little bit about this tree talk to us a little bit about it and he agreed so let's listen to what Colbert has to say about the river birch. Stick around. What right. we have here is a member of a tree family called birch. There's lots of them. Yellow, white, paper, lots of them. This is the river birch. Important thing about the woods is you need to know the nature, characteristics, and properties of all the plants you use. The more plants you know, the more knowledge you got. This plant right here, I like it because it's very, very versatile. It has lots and lots and lots of applications. Its nature is if you have a disturbed area and lots of sun and it's fairly wet, it pops up in a whole community. The tree doesn't live very long and I call it the starter tree. After it's been here for 30 to 50 years, it usually dies and other tree communities build in because this is a sandbar that has enough silt to grow plants. And this sandbar is about 32 years old. Before that, this was deep and underwater. But as the river changes and dirt and sediment changes, different plants like that community to start the forest. So this is phase one of the forest. In another 40 years, this will have oak trees on it and pines. Right now it's got this species. This species right here is what I call a starter kit forest. A forest will just start with this. The thing I like about this tree is the bark peels. Easy to recognize. And even though the bark is different on all three, three trees, it's still the same species, just like humans. Not all of them are the same height. Some are short, some are tall, some are thick, some are thin. Now I like to check it through what the properties is. And it looks to me like it lights easily with a match and it burns with black smoke. That tells me it has oil in it. So the bark in this tree has oil. If it has oil in it, it's probably water resistant. And it probably burns hot and quick with the oil in it. So I use that good for starting my fires. A lot of things to know about it. Experiment has told me because I practice the wood is very soft and brittle. It has very little durability. It doesn't have long fibers, it's got short ones. It breaks easy. It burns well, but it burns quick. And if you ever need a toothpick at this stage of decay, it's easy to get, build toothpicks. But once you're familiar with the nature and characteristics of a given species, learn everything you possibly can about that tree species or that plant, start using it and apply those techniques to every other plant until you're intimately familiar with every plant in the forest. One thing I like to tell people, if you go to a football game, you got a thousand people in the stadium and they tell you everybody's name, you won't remember shit. You'll forget it all. But if you know the nature and characteristics of a hundred people, then you know who to take fishing, who to take hunting, and who's going to beat you at the card game. The same thing is true of a forest. You've got to know what to expect out of each plant and animal. It burns quick, clean, and efficient. The disadvantage is it has no, no coals, no hot coals, no embers. So if I want hot coals and embers, I don't use this kind of wood. But this is great for warming your hands, drying stuff out, cooking a fish, especially if you don't want to be discovered because there's no smoke. The smoke-free river birch stick fire. Now as the weather changes, we're into late winter and early spring. Some days it's warm, some days it's cold. We've got a cold north wind blowing in today. We just had a full moon. Now we're in the dark of the moon. And trees are very, very good about blending in with the environment and the cycles and seasons. And somewhere between this moon and the next moon, the sap in this tree will rise. So I'm going to check it to see if the sap is risen yet. I'm not going to hurt the tree, I'm just going to make a small dent and it'll heal up. It doesn't take but a minute or two for the sap to grip. I see it's getting wet. So we're in the early stages of spring. I know because the tree told me. 
I don't care how cold or hot it is. These trees go by the length of the day, the amount of light, the moon cycles, and a hundred other things that scientists don't even know about. These trees live here, they were born here, and they're perfectly blended for their environment. If I'm smart enough to watch what the plants and the animals are doing, and I do exactly the same thing, then I will blend in perfectly with the natural environment, and I will become one with the earth. What I'm going to do, is this starts to drift, bring your camera closer, and I'm going to show you the drop. What we've got is a drop of moisture that's leaking out. It's the blood of the tree, the sap of the tree. That means the sap is rising. The sap is rising to bring the early stages of the swelling of the buds in the leaf system, the catkins, and the reproductive cycles. This is the juice, the life, the blood of the tree. This particular species right here, the sap is very tasty, kind of sweet, uh, and very sterile. So if this particular tree helps to grow in a polluted environment, this tree is also a filter for the nasty water. So you can drink this even if you can't drink that. Now some of you know there's a lot of birds and woodpeckers that drink sap out of the different kinds of trees as a source of nutrition. Having watched the animals do that, I also know that there's about a dozen or two kinds of trees that I can drink the sap of and derive nutrition as well as moisture. I'm not going to cover them all now, that's too much information. You'll forget it all. Just like if I introduced you to 500 people in one day, you wouldn't remember any of them. But once you know a tree intimately, any kind of weather, any season, day or night, eyes closed, know its smell, its nature, its characteristics, and everything about it, you know this better than you know your first cousin. As soon as you get into relationship with all the plants, you know them better than you do your family and friends. You'll be so at one with the earth that you will know things you can't explain. And these plants that you know will start communicating with you. They won't speak English, but they will communicate. This tree has been talking to me since it was born. There's all the plants around here. I've had lots of good conversations with a certain amount of adult beverage with lots of these plants. You know them so well. Do you kiss all the trees you get to know? There are certain ones I prefer to kiss over others. <laughs> this is one of a dozen trees or so that you can make sugary syrup out of. Plus the flavor is distinctive enough you can make a lot of tasty human uh, food sources or flavorings. Not going to cover all that. You'll forget it anyway. I teach a lot of people a lot of classes over many years, and I like to make fun of the people who ask a really innocent, stupid question. And here's one that I'll really lay back. This kind of thing happens a lot. People say, wow, I'm sorry I missed your class. Can you please cover everything you know about trapping? By the way, i got to go to the bathroom. <laughs>